1969, people from all around the world tuned into their television sets during a monumental scientific achievement of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. But have you ever heard the full story? Join us as we have a look at some secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Takeoff was dangerous. The Apollo Saturn rockets were so jam-packed with fuel that it was capable of throwing 100 pounds of shrapnel up to 3 miles. Now there probably should have been some kind of warning for civilians and onlookers to keep a safe distance. NASA wasn't really even sure that the rocket would make it out of the atmosphere, and as such they couldn't rule out the possibility that it may just explode on takeoff. They did, however, know that the shrapnel would be flying great distances, and that's why they seated all the VIP spectators exactly three and a half miles away from the launch pad. Anti-diarrhea drugs With the luxury of today's toilets and accessories like bidets, who would have guessed that scientists had not quite figured out how to use the bathroom in zero gravity? Those poor astronauts aboard the Apollo 11 were like some sort of scientific lab rats that had to resort to using other means to relieve themselves. The drinking water was a fuel cell byproduct, but since the hydrogen gas filters didn't work, every drink turned out bubbly. The American astronauts finally discovered what it was like to visit Europe and not know how to order tap water. All you're getting is bubbly water there, so drink that carbonation and feel fancy for a few seconds. At least one astronaut, and possibly more, had to resort to using anti-diarrhea drugs during the entire mission to avoid any mishaps inside their spacesuits. Planting the flag was an ordeal. One of the most monumental moments in history did not come easily or even quickly for the astronauts aboard the Apollo 11. Putting the flag into the moon proved to be so much more difficult than what was anticipated. NASA studies suggest that the lunar surface would be soft, but Armstrong and Aldrin discovered that this was actually not the case and the surface was covered by a hard rock, and that hard rock was covered by a thin layer of dust sitting on top. They did manage to get a flagpole just a few inches into the ground, but had to be extremely careful when leaving so they didn't accidentally knock it over. The lunar landing was in HD. Now it's hard to imagine that it would take about 40 years to come out with HD technology, and that it was available for the lunar landing. Although it couldn't be streamed into households across the world, astronauts did get to film themselves in high definition and it was done so for the first time ever, as cool as it sounds. Now, if you've ever seen a video of the lunar landing from 1969, then you're going to be familiar with the grainy feed that almost every other household in America was seeing. It was actually captured in much higher quality, though. That's because NASA's camera was able to capture video in a format that wasn't quite available yet for household television sets. Fortunately, however, there are some pretty amazing digitally restored versions on NASA's website if you ever want to take a peek and see this monumental moment in history how it should have been originally captured. The First Words on the Moon Neil Armstrong seems to get all of the credit for his famous quote, but it wasn't the first lunar sentence. The first person to speak was actually Buzz Aldrin, and he didn't have quite the appeal with his quote of, okay, engine stop. But we do have to give him credit where credit is due, because technically speaking, he gets to gloat about being the first one to ever utter a word on the lunar surface. Accidents happen. Okay, so Neil Armstrong may have been the first man to step foot on the moon, but he couldn't possibly outdo Aldrin in this category. Buzz Aldrin was the first to urinate on the moon. In fact, he emptied his bladder into his spacesuit's urine collector the moment that he stepped foot on the lunar surface. He made a higher than expected leap, and his urine collector would break, sending pee into his boot, which sounds both disgusting and uncomfortable. Aldrin had to keep his cool though, because he was on a live radio feed, and we're pretty sure that he had some laughs once he got back to safety. Life insurance wasn't available for the crew, 
As it turns out, insurance companies didn't have a whole lot of faith in NASA or the Apollo 11 crew, and that meant that life insurance premiums for the three astronauts were going to be astronomical themselves and far too expensive. The astronauts did have a clever plan, though, because they decided to sign hundreds of postal covers, so if they didn't return, their families could make a mint off of selling the signatures. As it turns out, their plan was brilliant, because even today, those same signatures can still sell for thousands of dollars. Hypothetical Moon Disaster The days of Richard Nixon weren't all bad, if you ignore the blatant corruption and greed during his term. However, you have to admit that he knew just how to handle hypothetical disasters. Take, for instance, the fact that his speechwriter, William Sapphire, had to write him a statement just in case something went wrong on the moon. Thankfully, Nixon didn't have to deliver any bad news, but we have to admit that some of the statement is fairly poetic, given the somber reality of what would have happened if the Apollo 11 had failed. Quote, Fate has ordained that men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. End quote. That statement ended up becoming, quote, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin was religious. Atheism advocate Madeleine Murray O'Hare objected to government employees praying publicly and happened to be suing NASA at the time of the Apollo 11 mission. That meant that Buzz Aldrin would have to keep his religious practice to himself and private. Nonetheless, the astronaut took a Christian communion including a wafer and a thimble full of wine, which was prepared for him by his pastor. This whole ceremony was kept secret because it was technically not prohibited to do so, but Aldrin let Neil Armstrong in on the secret. NASA advised Aldrin not to take the communion during the live broadcast of the lunar landing. However, they didn't specifically say that he couldn't. Armstrong was an ace pilot. Now, there probably won't be too many complaints about being an amazing pilot if you're expected to conduct the very first moon landing. And that's why Neil Armstrong was highly sought after. It turns out that he may have been a little too good of a pilot, though. Armstrong was supposed to cut the engines when the lander was just a few feet from the surface, but he managed to land the rocket ship too softly on the surface of the moon. What actually occurred was that he landed it so perfectly and the lander's legs never crumpled, so the two astronauts had to leap from the door to land on the surface, instead of being able to just step down. The Eagle almost ran out of gas. The Eagle was the name of the rocket ship that was controlled by Neil Armstrong during the mission. As was stated before, Armstrong was an ace pilot that could handle any situation. However, one predicament could have ended catastrophically in the hands of someone else. Neil Armstrong almost ran out of gas while landing the Eagle on the moon's surface. Mission Control became frantic, believing that he may actually crash. But one of the engineers knew that there was a chance the exhaust would shoot back into the rocket as it landed, igniting the remaining propellant. All of their worries turned out to be just that and the Apollo 11 mission became a success, but it was in great part because of Neil Armstrong's amazing pilot skills. The flag wasn't the only thing left on the moon. Every item that was left on the moon was thoughtfully placed there by two astronauts, and the flag, which was designed by Sears Roebuck, wasn't the only thing left behind. The astronauts also left their backpacks, half of the Apollo moon landing module, and a few other sentimental items, along with a patch from the never-launched Apollo 1 mission. This ended prematurely as flames engulfed the command module during training exercises in 1967, killing three U.S. astronauts. Medals were also left behind commemorating pioneering Soviet cosmonauts Vladimir Komarov and Yuri Gagarin who both died in flight in 67 and 68. The cosmonauts were astronauts of the Soviet-Russian space program. 73 world leaders wrote goodwill messages, which Armstrong and Aldrin left, and a small gold olive branch pin was left in the symbol of peace. If any potential other life forms happened to stumble across the items, we think that they got the message. A pen saved the Apollo 11 crew's lives. As it turns out, a felt-tip pin can actually come in handy, especially during an Apollo 11 mission 
when Buzz Aldrin basically coined the term MacGyver in outer space. That's because he had to use his felt-tip pen to activate a broken circuit breaker which enabled the Eagle to blast off from the moon. The two astronauts noticed something on the floor of the rocket ship, which just so happened to be the circuit breaker switch. It had been bumped and was broken off in the crammed environment. But this wasn't just any kind of switch that you could buy at a Best Buy or a hardware store. It was the circuit breaker that activated the entire engine, which would lift them off of the moon and back to their next destination of safety. If they couldn't get the breaker in there, there would be no way to escape, and they wouldn't have lasted long with just Tang and astronaut food. The pen would turn out to be pretty useful, since it was made especially for NASA's Apollo missions. It had to be able to write without the use of gravity, and it also just happened to save their lives. Even astronauts go through customs and security checks. You know that dreaded moment when you're flying internationally and you realize that long line waiting for you is your ticket into another country? Well, just because astronauts are conducting a really important mission for science doesn't mean that they can just squeak past security and customs. In fact, the three astronauts from the Apollo 11 were brought back in Hawaii, and upon their entry, they had to be processed like any other traveler, being expected to fill out customs declarations. They only declared their moon dust and moon rock, and simply wrote their destination as the moon. But it's pretty amazing that such documents were still required. Perhaps they should have just been happy that they made it back from the mission, instead of making the astronauts fill out mundane paperwork when they returned to Earth. Pan Am Flight 6 Leaving from sunny Honolulu and headed to San Francisco, Pan Am Flight 6 left the runway, piloted by Captain Richard Ogg. Around halfway through the duration of the flight, the plane would gain altitude. But then the power input dropped, and one of the engines began to overspeed. Which, for those of you who don't know, it's when an engine spins faster than it was designed to do. The first officer